Previously in Thenero. Matthew chapter 12 verses 38. The men of Nineveh, the Bible says, shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. Because they repented at the preaching of Jonas and behold a greater than Jonas is here. The queen of the south shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. All of you, you know that David tells his son that when you're seeking, seek godly wisdom. Because David, by the eye of the spirit, knew that one day the king that should come after him will be given a divine opportunity to place a demand for the continuation of the kingdom of Israel. And he tells him at the time when that comes, ask for wisdom. Only a man with the heart of God knows the price of the wisdom of God. The heart of God begets the wisdom of God. And so Solomon, a time comes and he has an encounter with God through the form when he's king and makes a prayer in 1 Kings chapter 3 from verses 9. He says, give your servant an understanding mind and a hearing heart to judge your people that I may discern between good and bad. The Bible says it pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. And God said to him, because you have not asked for long life and riches know the lives of your enemies behold i have done as you have asked and i have given you a wise discerning mind so that no one before you was your equal nor shall any arise after you equal to you second king chapter 4 verses 29 continues to tell us the wisdom that was given and functioned on solomon he says and god gave solomon exceptionally much wisdom and understanding and breadth of mind like the sand on the seashore. I want you to think about it. That if you wanted to calculate the wisdom of Solomon, you needed to count every grain of sand on the seashore to know how wise that man was. And to think for a moment that all of that wisdom was dwelling in a man who pumps blood is amazing alone. But it happened. And the Bible says, Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the people of the East and all the wisdom of Egypt. In other words, one man had wisdom that excelled the wisdom of a nation. And the Bible says, his fame was in all nations round about. He also originated 3,000 proverbs and his songs were 1,005. He spoke of trees from the cedar that is in Lebanon to the hyssop that grows out of the wall. He spoke also of beasts, of birds, of creeping things and of fish. Men came from all peoples to hear the wisdom of Solomon and from all the kings of the earth who heard of his wisdom. Everybody who had the wisdom on that man stood up to come and just hear what is on this man. We now enter Solomonic wisdom to see what God had placed on him. And in Proverbs, he says, happy is the man that findeth wisdom. This is wisdom according to Solomon. He says, for the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. He says, she's more precious than rubies, and all the things that thou can desire are not to be compared unto her. In other words, you will desire even the highest desire in the world you'll ever have. And he says, when you get your highest desire and compare it to wisdom, wisdom is still far greater than any man's desire. He says, length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand are riches and honor. Verses 18 says, she is a tree of life, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. The Lord by wisdom has founded the earth, and by understanding he has established the heaven. This is the thing that he used when he was creating earth. It's big. This is to Solomon. He was just the kind of man who... Even in his freest state, when his heart yields, he starts to ponder the deepest things that any human being can speak. When the queen of Sheba heard of the fame, the Bible says she came to prove him with hard questions. When the queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom, that means everything he spoke cast a vision. And because of the wisdom on his life, everything around him was emulating, was manifesting the wisdom of God on his life. The meat of his table, had wisdom the sitting of his servants had wisdom the attendance of his ministers has wisdom their apparel had wisdom his cupbearers had wisdom 
His ascent by which he went up into the house of the Lord, the way he went up, she saw the mode of worship. She saw the pattern by which this man entered the presence of God. And she knew that there's a wisdom of God upon his life. And the Bible says, and there was no spirit in her. You know, she was smitten by this fellow. Whatever she saw in the kingdom of Solomon was a lesson. It wasn't grand and beauty. She learned too much that day. And then God says, With all you have had on one man, God says, Behold, a greater than Solomon is here! Which is Jesus. If Solomon had greater wisdom than the wisdom of Egypt and all the wisdom of the East, one with greater wisdom is come. Let me tell you just how much Solomon saw. When a man says that she is a tree of life, and we go back into Genesis and find two trees. One tree was of the knowledge of good and evil, and the other tree was a tree of life. And God refuses man to eat of the tree of life because man was so corrupted. And he knew that if a man eats of the tree of life in his corrupt nature, he will not die, he will not fail, nothing. Are you hearing me? And then Jesus starts to show you that the vision that Solomon has, he was seeing a typification of a sort of a figure that later in the New Testament becomes a vine. And he says, I am the vine. And he says, ye are the branches. For without me, you can do nothing. Christ becomes the tree of life. He says, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. And nobody cometh to the Father except by me. Now when Paul is walking in those sentences, he says something so powerful in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6. He says, when we are among the full grow, those who are spiritually mature, who are ripe in understanding, we do impart a certain wisdom. The knowledge of the divine plan, the Bible says, previously hidden. Why does Paul use the word previously hidden? He means there was a wisdom that was hidden, even from Solomon. And now revealed to us by God, he says that wisdom which God devised and decreed before the ages for our glorification to lift us up into the glory of his presence. The only kind of presence that only the Godhead has. Now if that kind of wisdom in God is available by Christ and it is greater than the wisdom of Solomon, do you know what that means? In other words, the Queen of the South will say, how can you fail? How can you be poor? How can you die early? How can things go out of line for you? Why would you rely on Egypt to feed you? But now in the New Testament, with all due respect, we realize that even Solomonic wisdom was a shadow. The substance was Christ. When you receive Jesus and you say, today I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Now, question. If you needed to know the wisdom of Solomon and you needed to count every sand on the seashore to know it. What do we need to know? How much wisdom is working in your spirit? Think about it. Breathe in and out and just think. If Solomon wrote 3,000 proverbs, if kings used to come to Solomon and they carried everything just to get to Solomon, what will men do to get to you? Whether you're in the deepest forest, in the poorest nation, in the dirtiest place, it doesn't matter where you are, when this thing sits upon your life, men will build roads to find you so they may. This is the only thing that guarantees glory on your life. And this is the thing that guarantees the anointing on your life. This is the thing that guarantees the presence of God on your life. When tumors meet you, when cancer meets you, when HIV meets you, when it looks at you, it says, here comes the wisdom of God in human flesh. 
and it says of the manifold wisdom of God to the intent that it might be known by the principalities and powers of this world when you come in front of a sick person wisdom is come there is no problem that can stand before you and it doesn't see you that you're the answer wherever you go you're the answer in every nation you step you're the answer in every business you sit in you're the answer in every school you go you're the answer every situation messianic when i understood just what it means to carry a wisdom greater in the case when two women come and they're fighting for a baby i would not have judged it the way solomon did i'm not saying he was wrong i'm only saying the one with greater wisdom is calm I would not judge it that way. Why? Because in the mystery of the Messianic, you have something called the unction. When two women come, you tell her you're lying. This is the mother. Take your child home. Hey, 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 hey. In the Messianic, we know who is the mother. How did you know? For the Spirit of God that rises in the inside of you, it searches the deep things of God. Yeah, the bottomless things of God. He says the Word of God, it's quick and active. It's sharper than a double-edged sword. It separates the bone and marrow. It exposes our hearts and thoughts for what they really are. For nothing is hid before Him for all things are naked before Him and defenseless. And I'm a child of the Word. I know who is the mother. The wisdom that is Solomonic is gifted. The wisdom that is Messianic is inherited. There's a difference. This one is a nature issue. The other one is a calling issue. When you became born again, what Solomon asked for you got born into. And he says, and that anointing knows all things. It's when you're born into this thing, you don't study Proverbs. You know Proverbs. I can never wake up one day and I don't have something stirring in my spirit. All I need is the inspiration of his presence. I just need to just rattle up. The word of God will constantly stay open to you. If kings came for Solomon, oceans will flip and pour water to the direction of your sail if they have to internet will break for you inventions and innovations of the world will break for you why because you carry messianic no man with this wisdom can be hidden this sermon is now available on dvd and cd at Fenero sales table and andrew womack bookshop